So uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, as you said, I'm Ryan, and today I'll be talking about AOS, um, which is joint work with many excellent co-authors. So just to give some background, um, ZK Snarks are a cryptographic tool which allow a prover to convince a verifier of some statement. So in more detail, if we have some function F and we have some public input X, and the prover additionally has some private witness W, they want to convince the verifier that F evaluated on X and W is equal to one. And in addition to convincing them of this, we have several like asymptotic things we're interested in. So the prover should run in time linear in size of the function. Um, the actual proof size should be sublinear or we know how to get constant size. And the verifier should also run in a sublinear amount of time. So let's say log of F. And the ZK here stands for zero knowledge, which means that the verifier should learn nothing about this private witness, except that this condition holds true. And for an example, um, you could think about this public input as being, let's say, a SHA-2 hash, and the prover wants to convince some verifier that they know a pre-image to that hash without actually revealing it. So all these properties have made ZK snarks like very attractive, and they're used in numerous deploy protocols. So things like private transactions, private smart contracts, um, decentralized multiplayer games for a fun example. Um, and I think the last talk that uh, we just had also used them. And in general, they're a very useful tool that show up uh, just in many applications in cryptography. But one problem with them is that proving is, is very slow. So if we take the example I just gave, let's say we're proving a pre-image of a hash. Let's say that pre-image is 10 kilobytes. We're on a commodity laptop and using a pretty standard ZK snark called Graph 15. It will take me almost two minutes um, to prove this thing, while just running the hash locally only takes a few uh, milliseconds. So this is a problem. And this problem is kind of compounded by the fact that in many applications, the device that, that we want to prove on is a mobile device or some sort of resource constrained device. So a potential solution to this is to outsource the proving. So we have our mobile device and now they're going to send their input and the witness to some more powerful cloud machine, which will generate the proof and give it back to us. And we can extend this uh, and think of a cluster of machines that run this computation. And in fact, prior work has done this and shown that you, know, you can get very impressive protocols in this setting. But there's a, a big problem in that, you know, one of the, the main purposes of ZK Snarks was to hide this witness. And kind of in this setting, we're now leaking the witness to a number of other parties. So our goal is to do this outsourcing, but to do it privately. And one way we can think about this is we now have some delegation protocol where we will provide our witness in some encrypted or obfuscated form to the worker. And then, you know, maybe with some rounds of interaction, the worker can still produce the ZK Snark um, for us. And we actually know how to do this, but as far as we know, um, or sorry, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, um, kind of our goal first off is efficiency. We want the delegator's work to be uh, much less than local proving, and we want uh, the witness to be private from the worker. And as I was saying, we, we know how to do this, but as far as we know, it requires some uh, heavy tools such as fully homomorphic encryption, which doesn't really make it practical for us. So in order to work towards practicality, we can uh, think of a relaxed setting with threshold privacy, which again, I think the prior talks have kind of mentioned a bit. And so in this setting, what we'll do is we'll send this witness to multiple workers. They're going to do some, you know, talk with each other and then give back the proof. And our efficiency goal is going to be the same, but our privacy goal will be slightly tweaked. So we're going to say that the delegator's witness should be hidden from the workers as long as one of these workers um, is honest. And this relaxed setting um, allows us much more flexibility in our protocol. So in particular, what we do in this work is we show how to uh, delegate ZK Snark proving for systems based on polynomial IOPs. And we construct specific delegation schemes for the KZG and inner product argument polynomial commitment schemes, the Marlin PIOP. And we generically show how to delegate any ZK Snark that combines a PIOP and a polynomial commitment scheme. And if you don't know uh, these terms, don't worry about it. Uh, the talk will, will reason about them at a very high level. I just mentioned this for those who do have context. Um, but we implemented and evaluated our delegation protocols. And the TLDR is that delegating from a mobile phone is uh, 26 times faster than computing locally. So let's uh, talk a bit about how we get here. So our starting point is multi-party computation, also known as MPC. An MPC is a way for multiple parties to compute a function f over their joint inputs in a privacy-preserving manner. And in this setting, we're interested in something called n-1 malicious security, 
which at a high level you can think of as um, the privacy of the party's inputs and correctness of the output holds if at least one of these parties is honest. And there's been a long line of cryptographic work which looks at different ways to do MPC. Um, today we'll be interested in a, a paper called speeds. And the model of computation of speeds is arithmetic circuits over a finite field. So if I want to execute some function f, I express it as, as an arithmetic circuit. And then to actually execute the circuit, I have a few steps. So in the first step, I share my inputs with additive secret sharing. And as some prior talks have noted, in additive secret sharing, what we do is I take my input, and then I'm going to split it into multiple shares. And these shares don't leak anything individually about the original input. But if I have all of them, I can reconstruct the original input. And actually just holding on to a share, the uh, parties within the MPC can compute the circuit gate by gate. So for addition gates, you can actually just add your local shares together. And for multiplication, there's some interaction involved in a little bit heavier cryptography, but you can also do this as well. And so the question is, can we kind of take this generic MPC and use this to compute the ZK snark prover? So can I have a delegation protocol where the delegator secret shares its witness to all the workers and then they run the MPC that computes the ZK snark? And a naive attempt at this fails for two main reasons. First main reason is that the snark circuit is very large. And to get some intuition why, you need to support things like polynomial arithmetic, group operations, random oracle calls, and naive representations of these things are very expensive in something like speed. And another reason why is just MPC is slow in general. So these generic MPC techniques are, are have some overhead. Um, and so, yeah, I'll, I'll get into more details on uh, this part later. For now, I'll focus on the circuit size and how we can reduce it. So here's a picture of the ZK snark prover. Again, don't worry if you uh, don't have prior context for this. All I want to point out is that this PIOP requires polynomial arithmetic over a finite field. Many popular polynomial commitment schemes require elliptic curve group operations. And Fiat Shamir requires uh, random oracles. Okay? And as I mentioned, all these things don't have nice representations kind of if you try this naively. So our solution here is, is inspired by some prior work that I've listed up here, um, is to generalize the circuit. So what we do is we extend kind of the speeds model of computation to include gates for group additions, group scalar multiplications, and random oracle calls. And we provide like new efficient protocols to compute these gates. And then using this extended model of computation, we design efficient subcircuits for a bunch of polynomial arithmetic that the PIOP prover needs. And the cool thing about these resulting protocols is that essentially besides multiplying two polynomials, all of these different subcircuits can be done completely locally, which means they're as efficient as the plain text prover. So with these changes, we get a circuit that's actually much, much smaller and, and actually quite efficient. But this basically gets us to where prior work is at. Um, and so the question is, we want to obviously do better than prior work. So how? And here we'll look to the generic MPC technique. So there's kind of two things or two main bottlenecks that, that hinder us here. So first, generic MPC requires this pre-processing that is, uh, requires some expensive techniques. And then also achieving this malicious security that I mentioned earlier, it also has some overhead associated with it. So to kind of address these things, there's, there's two ways or two things that we'll take advantage of. And the first one is this asymmetric threat model. So what I mean by this is that usually in MPC, it's assumed that any party uh, can be malicious. So if I have n parties in this protocol, any one of them can be a malicious party. Um, and so the, the protocol has to defend against, uh, against that. But in our delegation protocol, the setting's a little different. And in, in particular, we, have the, we know the delegator is always honest. So we have this kind of always honest party that we can rely on. And so the question is, can we utilize this party to speed things up? Kind of the second opportunity is what I'll call the air resilient nature of the snark itself. So what that means is that uh, in the snark prover, if there's any non-trivial deviation from the honest algorithm, there's this very nice soundness guarantee that ensures that the resulting proof will be invalid. And so what we want to try to do is, can we use the soundness property of the ZK snark to get malicious security for cheaper than generic techniques? So I'll talk about the first, uh, the asymmetric threat model first. And if you recall from when I mentioned uh, stuff with speeds, multiplications are the thing that both require interaction and are expensive. And so we'll be, I'll just give you the example of how we optimize kind of these multiplications. So 
we have two workers and they each have additive secret shares of uh, a value X and Y. And they want to compute some protocol so that they get additive secret shares um, of their product. And so speeds does this via some form of pre-processing. So what that means is that there's an offline phase that's independent of the inputs where these parties you know, do some pre-processing and they get some state. And I'll just mention that this pre-processing protocol requires some heavy cryptography and it's, it's quite expensive. But then once you kind of offload this expensive part of the computation, you get this very cheap online phase. And our idea here is to utilize the delegator is basically to just have the delegator do this pre-processing instead of using cryptography. And if the delegator does this, uh, you get something that's super cheap. And so we just kind of immediately lose this very expensive cost um, or save this very expensive cost, which is great. There's a couple other instances in the MPC where we can do similar things. Um, I'm just mentioning this for the sake of time. So that's how we kind of utilize the asymmetric threat model. And then taking advantage of the ZK snark error resilience. So as I mentioned earlier, um, generally there's a high overhead in MPC for achieving malicious security in a generic fashion. So for speeds, the technique that they used at least doubles the amount of communication and computation. And you can see this reflected in uh, prior work, which can't really do any better than a 2x overhead compared to local proving um, because of this overhead of malicious security. So to get around this, um, our intuition comes from the GMW compiler, which is a cryptographic compiler that takes a semi-honest secure MPC protocol. That is an MPC protocol that is only secure if uh, all the parties kind of honestly execute uh, the protocol. And it has each party provide a zero knowledge proof for correct computation of each message. And if they do that, you can show that you can get a maliciously secure protocol. And this is great, but the zero knowledge proof is very expensive to generate in, in the protocol itself. But what we notice is that the computation that we're doing is itself a zero knowledge proof. So after I run my MPC, the output is a zero knowledge proof that I can verify and check. And so what I wanna be able to say is, hey, for correctness, can we just say that if the adversary ever deviates from the honest protocol, this end, the resulting proof will fail to verify. And in fact, this almost works to get malicious security. There's one small problem, is that there's these selective failure attacks that exist. So a malicious worker can kind of change the, the share of the witness polynomial in a specific way so that it only fails verification sometimes. And this can actually leak information about the witness, which you know, violates kind of the security properties that we have. So to get around this, we introduce a notion of a consistency checker. And this basically just enforces that the workers use the correct witness share. Um, and as a result, once you have this thing, you can actually achieve malicious security. And the nice thing about the consistency checker is it's super cheap. So in the case of the Marlin PIOP, the consistency checker is only a single uh, additional query to the witness polynomial and a small amount of delegator work. And it's actually so cheap that we can pipeline it with the rest of our delegation protocol and there's zero overhead. So we essentially get malicious security completely for free in our protocol. Okay, so I just mentioned two ways that we kind of improve. Um, the MPC. And the question is, does this result in concrete performance improvements? So before I actually, uh, I'll just mention here, I won't go into detail, see the full paper for details, but uh, basically we have a bunch more crypto and kind of systems optimizations we apply to this problem to get the speed up that we do. And we implemented everything. So we implemented our protocols in a Rust library <coughs> um, in the ArcWorks ecosystem. And again, to kind of review, we construct delegation protocols for any PIOP based and so we specifically did this for the Marlin uh, ZK snark, and this is what we evaluated. And um, from our evaluation, what you can see is that if we have a commodity laptop with a strong internet connection, we improve over prior work by 6x. Um, we, over local proving, we get a speed up of, of 9x. And because the delegator is doing much less work, we can actually prove much bigger instances, so 256 big, times bigger. Once we restrict communication a little bit, our gains get a little bit smaller. Um, but then once we go to a resource constrained device, which was kind of our main uh, target application, we get this nice 26 X improvement. So yeah, that's basically the talk. Um, we'll be talking again at Usenix Security this year. Uh, an updated kind of version of the paper will be up on ePrint soon. Um, and the code will, will be up to ARCs work soon as well. So, thank you.